for our purpose, we'll select none, since the transformation is not performed relatively and is completely absolute, this will bring the baby back to its normal rotation state. Now moving over to the left key press event, we will also add a transform action, this time selecting mirror. We'll run the game again. Good. In addition to changing the direction of movement, the babies now change the direction that they are facing. You should notice that only a change in the movable capability was required and that both the normal and the super babies were affected. This demonstrates one of the great advantages in using capabilities when designing games. Logic that's shared between objects must only be maintained in a single location and no duplication is required. We will now add the obstacle sprite of our tutorial, the cabinet sprite. Our sprite will have a single animation. That's good. Before placing it in the room, we'll take advantage of a new concept, paths. So far, all of our characters' movements were done by either repositioning sprites or giving them speed. These methods are effective in most basic cases, but sometimes a more complex prescribed movement is required. This is where paths come into use. Let's go into the room designer and demonstrate a path. Pressing this button, we may start drawing our path. A path is simply a series of points in a room that define how a sprite should move. As you can see, another position is added every time the left mouse button is pressed. Path drawing may also be cancelled by pressing escape. Let's start drawing the path we will use in our game. Notice the grid appears to make it easier for us to draw exact straight lines. The grid may also be turned on manually in the toolbar to help accurate placement of sprite instances. We would like our cabinets to move back and forth. For this, we will draw a simple two points path. Pressing enter ends the path drawing, and we will name it cabinet path. Path may be used by all visible objects in the game and are listed in the paths view on the right. Now we'll add a created event to the cabinet and a fan and move in path action. Self is the right target. We'll select our newly created path. Back and forth is also good and we'll give it some speed. We place two cabinets in the room, one in front of each of the babies. Let's run it. As you can see, the cabinets are moving back and forth indefinitely. We can move our babies towards the cabinets. But as you can see, nothing happens when they collide. We will change all that. First, we will add a collision event between the super baby and the cabinet. destroying the cabinet when they meet. Let's make the normal baby's logic a bit more tricky. We need another capability. Throwable. Throwable is going to have two animations. Standing. And thrown. We will add a collision event between the throwable and cabinet. First, we change the animation to thrown. Second, we'll give the object speed to the left. And lastly, 
we will set timer 1 to be called in 300 milliseconds. What we would like to achieve here is have the baby thrown back whenever it collides with the cabinet. The timer action's purpose is to make the baby stop after it has been thrown back far enough. For this to work, we still need the timer 1 event. In here, all we need is to change the animation back to standing. And set the object speed to 0. Moving back to the normal baby, we now add our new capability. Oh, look at that. The studio detected that we already have a standing animation in our normal baby. Our new standing animation has the same meaning as the normal baby's current animation. So we'll select keep the current animation. As you can see, the new thrown animation was added to the list. Let's give it some frames. Since the standing animation was combined, it does not require any further treatment. Let's run our game. The two cabinets are moving at the right. Let's move towards them with our babies. The super baby goes right through the cabinet, destroying it. The normal baby, on the other hand, cannot pass through the obstacle and is thrown back. We can try going through the cabinet as many times as we like, but we will always get thrown back. We'll save our game, calling it MoBaby1. This brings our tutorial to an end. In our next tutorial, we will upgrade our little baby's minigame with the help of properties.